In this video, I'm going to show you how to download SQL Developer from the Oracle website and get it set up and running on your Oracle database. To start, open up a browser, either Edge, Chrome, or any other browser that you like to use, and then browse to oracle.com. Once the Oracle website is loaded, it should look something like this. There should be a menu at the top somewhere. To download SQL Developer, go to Menu, and then Downloads and Trials, and then Developer Downloads. Once the page loads, scroll down. Scroll down to the Developer Tools section, and then find SQL Developer here. There's a separate SQL Developer Data Modeler tool, which I won't be showing in this video but click on the SQL developer entry here. Then you'll need to accept the license agreement. Scroll down a little further and you can see a list of all the different SQL developer versions for different operating systems. The current version at time of recording is version 17.2. Now you have a selection of different operating systems here. If you're running Windows 64 bit, you can download this version here, which includes JDK. If you're not running Windows 64-bit, you'll need to download JDK separately. For me, I'm running Windows 32-bit, so I'm going to download this file here. I'll then need to download JDK 8 separately, which I'll do shortly. Just like with the other Oracle downloads, you'll need to sign into your Oracle account. If you don't have one, click on Create Account and set one up. I have one, so I'm going to log in here. After you sign in, the download should start automatically. You can then choose to open or save the file. I'm going to save the file in a certain location. The download will then start. While that's downloading, I'm going to go back. This is because I want to download the JDK as well. The JDK stands for Java Development Kit, and you'll need this if you want to install and run Oracle SQL Developer. I'm going to click on this link here that says JDK 8. If you already have JDK 8 installed, then you won't need to do this step. But I don't currently have it installed, so I'm going to install it. I'm interested in this first table here that has the Java SE development kit. You'll need to click on Accept License Agreement first, and then you'll need to choose a version that aligns with your operating system. We have Linux, Mac, Solaris, and Windows. I'm going to choose this version here, Windows X86, which translates to Windows 32-bit. If I click on this file here, it should pop up asking me to download the file. Again, I'm going to choose a location to save the file in. I'm saving it in the same location as my SQL developer installation. Both files are now downloading. So now those two files have finished downloading. First, we'll need to install the JDK file, and then we can start using SQL Developer. So double click on this file to start the installation. If this warning pops up, click yes. The Java SE Development Kit installer will then start. Click next to begin. You can choose the optional features here, but I usually just leave them all selected and then click Next. The default installation path is also OK. The installation will then start. After a couple of minutes, you'll be asked to change this Java Runtime Environment folder. You can just click Next to use the default location. Now Java itself will be installed. The installation will then complete. Overall, it took about four or five minutes for this to install. Click on Close. Now we can install SQL Developer. The good thing about SQL Developer is we don't actually need to follow an installation wizard to install it and set it up. We just extract the files to a folder and then run the application. So let's extract the files now. I can right click on this downloaded SQL Developer file and click on Extract All. 
This will use the built-in extraction tool. If you have another tool such as WinZip or 7-Zip, you can use that extraction method. But I'll just click on Extract All. You can then select the destination folder. I'm going to change it to just the SQL Developer folder where the zip file is currently located. And then click on Extract. The files will then be extracted into the folder you specified. Now after this file has been extracted, it's currently in my Downloads folder. I'm going to move it to my main C drive, just to make it easier to run. So I'm going to drag the folder here to my C drive. Now after a few minutes, the copy should be completed. After the folder has been copied, open the folder and then double click on the SQL Developer application file. You'll then be asked to specify the Java JDK home. You'll notice this has popped up with the location that we just installed, so I should be able to click OK. The splash screen is then displayed while the application loads. The first time loading will take the longest, and the good news is that within SQL Developer, there are some settings you can change and features to disable to make the start time a bit quicker. This window will pop up if it's the first time you're running SQL Developer. If you have a previous installation, then you'll see some options here. Otherwise, if it's your first time, just click on No. SQL Developer will then keep loading. The main screen will then load. You'll also get a message about Oracle Usage Tracking. If you'd like to allow this, leave the box checked and then click on OK. Now, SQL Developer has started. To get started accessing your database, you'll need to create a connection. To do that, click on the green plus sign on the far left corner over here. The new database connection window will then appear. First, give your connection a name. I'm going to call it local sys. The username will be system. Password is the password you entered when you installed Oracle Database. Or if you have a different user, you'll enter a different username and password. I'm going to click on Save Password, which means I won't need to enter the password every time I want to connect. But if you want to or need to, then leave that unchecked. Connection Color. You can change this to have the window display a different color when you connect as that user. In the second half of the window here, you enter the connection details. I'm going to leave all the defaults, the hostname localhost, port 1521 and SIDXE. This is because I'm running Oracle Express on my own computer. If you're running a different database or if you're running this at your work, you'll need to change these details. I'm going to click on save to save the connection. It will then appear in the list on the left here. I can then click on test to test that the connection works. Now if the Oracle database is running and there are no issues, you should see status success down in the bottom left here. If there are any errors, you'll need to look up as to how to resolve them. I've tested it and it's been successful, so I'm going to click connect. After you click connect, Oracle SQL Developer will then connect to your database and open a new SQL worksheet. So now we've installed SQL Developer and connected to our database. You can then use the application to run queries on this database. And that comes to the end of this SQL Developer setup video. If you've liked the video, make sure to click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to learn more about Oracle databases. Thanks for watching.